In this episode, we kick off 2024 with our first Boondockers Welcome Stay. And we have a little bit of a problem with the door this getting isn't stuck. Even the one. This is so a stay tuned and find out what happens. We started our two-day travel journey by leaving the Cloudcroft and Mayville, New Mexico area. Welcome to 2024. It's another episode of Cruising with the Clements. My name's Mark. And I'm Jen. And these guys is Kennedy, Cooper, and Bryce. And we are kicking off 2024 with a new crazy adventure that we want to tell you all about. It's our biggest adventure that we've ever planned. Yeah. So. In our last video, you would have seen uh, we were in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, where we spent the month for Christmas. That's Pancake. <laughs> Hello, Pancake. We we're just leaving there now. We are crossing through White Sands uh, National Park in Missile Range area, and we are on our way to Tucson. All right, so we are on our way to, do you want to say it? Alaska. We're going to do Alaska this year, guys, but we're going to need your help. Uh, we are currently on after Tucson we'll be making our way out to San Diego so we literally decided crazily to start from the southernmost point of the US yeah. and then drive all the way up to Alaska so there's a lot of places in between we don't know them all if you know of some places that we should stop in California Oregon boondocking spots I yeah. uh, can't miss like parks or things obviously we are trying to hit the national parks yeah um, but if so, there's something else that you think we should stop and see please let us know leave a leave a message down in the comments so we can add it to the bucket list and get there okay now we've got some big goals for this Alaskan trip we are going to be spending almost three months yeah. maybe even a little bit more and a month on each end in Canada probably making our way to and from yeah so the goal over the next several months is to make our way up the coast to the Arctic Circle. It's on the bucket list. We definitely can go there in Alaska. That is the goal that you guys will be going uh, with us over the next few months. Very exciting. But for those of you who have been to Alaska, I think everybody, whether you have been or not, knows that the road conditions can be a little challenging. So we want to show you some of the upgrades that we've done over the last couple months to prepare for an Alaskan road trip. In addition to some of those, we have some big upgrades coming up here in the next couple of months um, in preparation to be able to do more boondocking. Yeah. Because with our new camper, we haven't been able to do that. We haven't upgraded our batteries yet. We do have a solar panel, but we need to do some major refitting of... Yeah, of the battery system. Yeah. So uh, I think in next week's episode, Fingers crossed that everything goes well. Fingers crossed. Because I am not an expert, but I bought all the equipment to upgrade our uh, system to a lithium battery. So that'll be next week's episode. And then do you want to tell them what we're going to do the following week? Then the following week, uh, this is also another thing that we decided this year um, as part of our travel plans was to make more of an effort to attend full-time RVer, family-centric type of rallies. And we're hitting our first one in two weeks which is the Escapers 2024 Bash out in Lake Havasu. Yeah, and we're really excited about meeting some people that we're sort of like Instagram friends with and Facebook friends with. You know, it's one thing when you talk to people on social media all the time, but it's another thing when you actually meet them in person. So I'm definitely excited about that. Yeah, and then a couple weeks after that, we're gonna be where? We have another rally through Full Time Families um, that we're going to. We've been a member for a while. Um, We've met up with people. I've yeah. kept in touch with some people, but I've never been to an event. So, you know, we're making efforts. I think that's the thing about this um, lifestyle is that sometimes you have to put in a little bit of extra effort to kind of find your tribe. And so 
we're hoping that maybe we'll find some of that. Yeah, so last year we were at the Grand Design Rally in Tennessee, and uh, our good friends Chris and Megan uh, with the channel YouTube channel Why Wait uh, were getting an upgrade done to their camper there, and so we got kind of a first-hand look at what they were doing and realized if we wanted to go to Alaska, that's the kind of upgrade we need to do, which is the suspension system. The road conditions, much like this one right now, uh, are not great on the way to Alaska. So uh, being full-time and having you know our whole life in the camper, we knew that uh, we wanted to beef up the axles, beef up the uh, leaf springs, and install a new system. So this is that system. Yeah, so, uh, Yway did a much better job of filming that installation than we did, so I highly encourage you to check their video out uh, in the description below uh, if you're interested in that system. We've had, the, we've had this new suspension system for a couple months, and we've taken it from Tennessee to Colorado, and now into Arizona today. Uh, and I can tell you on some pretty bad roads, it's night and day difference. So a lot less jostling of the vehicle while we're driving. So uh, the spring system is a, it has a, a shock for recoil. So when it compresses, the spring slowly releases, not the spring, the, the shock, uh, dampens the recoil so that you don't get a bunch of bouncing motion. So you just it just takes the impact and then you're good. Uh, so a lot less wear and tear on the interior of the camper. And then like drawers aren't open and like stuff all over the place when we have like some rough travel days. And then from the car perspective, you barely feel like the camper is even there. Uh, so that combined with our Anderson hitch, which we also added a few months ago, mm -hmm. world of difference in, in trailering uh, the, the RV. So uh, super happy with both of those upgrades. So our trip across the desert um, from Bay Hill, New Mexico, Bay Hill, Bancroft, New Mexico, um, is a little bit longer than what we like to drive in a typical day. So we're making it into a two day trip, which means we're hitting up our first Boondockers welcome of the year. Yeah, very um, exciting. Yeah, we're pretty excited. So we're gonna stop in Wilcox, Arizona tonight. Um, they actually have uh, hookups. They have yeah. uh, electricity, I think they have 50 and 30 amp. Um, so let's check that out. Okay, so we're at our Boondockers Welcome. They have electricity and water for us, which is great because we're not 100% set up to um, do off-grid, not even for night, because it's cold. And between the furnace and the refrigerator, it sucks the battery down. So, um, here we are. Mark's getting a little water. Water sprayed everywhere because our connection was loose somehow. It's and we couldn't get water this morning because it was still frozen at the campsite. So now everything's covered in water. But look at this sunset tonight. So pretty. Okay, then we have another problem over here. <laughs> okay, so the problem is the 30 amp hookup is for whatever reason in the kitchen area. Something has shifted during transportation today and I can't, nobody can get the lock unlocked. There's something blocking it. So, um, we've got to try and figure out, which we're probably going to open up the slides, have the kids undo their drawers because their drawers go to the kitchen area. So we're going to see if we can see what we can see back there. Other than that though, one more look at the sunset. Is this beautiful? Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the fridge came open. And there's a bunch of drinks that have fallen in between the countertop and the door. I can't imagine that that would block it that much though, that you can't turn the key. It doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like there's gotta be something else that's wedged in there cause it is really tight. It will not open. So I don't know what we're going to do. And we have a lock on the fridge. Yeah. And we have a lock on the fridge. So 
But this is where, for some reason, I stored the 50 to 30 amp converter. Not by the electrical cord? Where? No. <laughs> it seemed like putting it in a drawer was a good idea, apparently. So I'm going to stay at this until we have power. Otherwise, we're going to run out of power tonight. It was better when it was playing that way. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm done talking. Okay. Well, pretty sunset again. Go ahead. Hold on. All right, so. All right, so Jen pulled the door open, which I, th that was sort of my last resort. You're going to have to. Possibly breaking the lock. No, no, Cooper, you need to the door. So Pull tight. tight. But, okay. Hold tight. We're right, trying to. Per underneath, bud. Underneath. <laughs> we're trying to prevent sodas from right, exploding everywhere. Go. No, no, hold up, hold up. What do you mean hold up? Hold friend, the thing. There we go. Put, put this down. Yeah. Right. All right. There, there you go. go. Cooper, you got to hold it. Hold it tight. Okay. Oh, Holy cannoli. No, guys, Goodness. Okay. So I latched that door and I know it was latched closed. Now, I, I undid it so I could get a sunny D. So oh, a kid Cooper, came look here in. at the camera. And then I tried to. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's all right, dude. We got it open and that's all that matters. Okay. And we didn't drop any sodas and nothing exploded. I mean, you guys can put that down and get the sodas out. Yeah. I Yay! No. Okay. See that? That is the exact impression of the lock right there. Uh, so it was pressed right here against the lock and the, it just refused to allow the lock to move at all. Now, why is this space perfectly spaced for a soda to come out of there? and fall right there. I don't know, <laughs> but. But what other lesson have we learned? Electrical stuff should be all in the same place. Hey, look, it's the exact thing. Actually, this isn't even the thing we need. That's not the one, that's the other that's one. That's not the thing we need. Oh my God. Where's the thing we need? I, I, I'm gonna cross. This isn't even the one. This is a 30 to a 20. Oh, here it is. I got this one. 50 okay. and then this is 30 out. You were going to lose your mind. I was going to lose my mind on you that I just did all that work for nothing. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? Ultimately, this is your fault because Cooper came in and got a sun kissed and he got your vitamin water for today. So that's on you guys because I locked and closed this thing. Um, Where was the double checking before you closed the door? I closed the door and locked it myself and you guys went in and unlocked it and came in here and destroyed my careful planning. Your fault. <laughs> um, but this is a good, this is a good thing. I mean, have. it hasn't, yeah. So this haven't. is a, just a baby safety latch that you'd put like on a cabinet or whatever in your house and it just sticks on and man, this one works really great. Okay. So <laughs> not our smoothest boondocking we're professionals. <laughs> Three years on the road. So, I mean, here's the, here's the reality of the situation. We've been yeah. um, in one place for a month and a half. So mm -hmm. we haven't had to do some of the stuff we usually do. You know, life happens. But as you can see, that was the extent of our anger situation. Yeah, we didn't really get mad. Yeah. So what we're saying is we hope we have provided some amusement for you this evening to um, see that, again, it's not always rainbow and sunshine. Sometimes yeah. stuff happens and if this has ever happened to you, leave a comment down below because yeah. I don't want to be the only one. What have your kids gone behind you and undid <laughs> that has caused like problems? Yeah. This turned out to be not a bad boondocker spot. So we we're only here for a night with the mountains surrounding us, great view. And then check this out. That's our exit out onto the road. So we literally just pulled in and then you pull straight on out and you're out of here. Can't beat that. And they have room for a couple people. So that has full hookups. Ours had full hookups. And then there's space over here too. But there's another cool thing back here. They have horses. And they said they're plenty. You can, you can pet them and love them. Just don't go in the pen.
All right, but one more thing that we talked about earlier in this episode that I wanted to show you is the Anderson. The Anderson hitch is a really simple setup. So the uh, trailer goes right down onto the ball. The ball moves with the trailer along with this plate. And this plate is attached to these tensioning chains. So the key there is that these uh, braces are at an angle. So they're providing the weight distribution just off these chains and nothing else. And then there's also this really cool nylon uh, shock absorber. So what it does is it compresses when you make those bumps and like go, if you go over like a speed bump or you hit a pothole, that nylon sleeve compresses rather than you just bouncing up and down. So it takes away a lot of that up and down motion that you get when you go over uneven objects, which is really, really nice. So, but the whole setup, all you have to do is put in this pin on this plate and you raise it up just like any other system to relieve tension off these. And then you can tighten these bolts back here. Uh, so you can tighten up the chain as, as much as you want for proper tensioning. So what they suggest is one, two, three, um, uh, rungs being shown on the, on the bolt here, and then you're properly tightened on each side. Really cool system, really easy to, uh, take on, uh, really easy to put on and take off. And so far we've absolutely loved it. We've had it for about eight months. One thing you might not notice here is that there's no sway bar. And the reason there's no sway bar is because this plate and the ball moving with the trailer does that swaying effect. So inside here is a tapered cone that has a nylon sleeve. And the more weight the trailer applies, the more sway control that you have from the whole setup. So the the swaying of back and forth of the trailer is pretty much eliminated by this very simple setup. All right, so the kitty is under is Bryce's floor? bed. Got her. Mission accomplished. All right, let's get her out to the car. Mission accomplished. All right, and last but not least, we've checked the bridge to make sure it's locked. So it should not be going anywhere today. Drag. The, uh, the stabilizer feet kicked up some rocks. That's how deep that dip was. Other than that, though, it was a great place to stay. Yeah. yeah. It was super quiet. Join us next week as the solar install goes very wrong. But first, we check out the Pima Air Museum, the Science Center located at the University of Arizona, and visit a world of miniatures.